Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Brothers Take podcast. I'm Chris and I am joined by my brothers, Adam. Hello. And Eric. Hello. And we are back in the room to continue our spoiler talk of Stranger Things season four, because we're going to be talking about volume two, the epic finale to the fourth season of Stranger Things. And I suppose that is your spoiler warning that if you haven't gotten around to seeing it yet, um, that and you maybe didn't read the title fully this is going to be a full <laughs> spoiler discussion so if you haven't seen the finale and if you haven't seen any of stranger things four, actually if you just haven't caught around to seeing it yet because the stuff we'll be talking about it could have been playing out throughout the whole season finally getting paid off so mm. bear that in mind once the intro music plays that is your final spoiler warning but as this discussion goes on we'd love to hear from you guys if you guys have also been watching stranger things four, um and also any predictions or thoughts for the future uh, of what they might do for season five. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, please jump down in the comments at any point to share your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this discussion, why not give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe and click that notification bell for all future content. If you guys listen to us on audio platforms, you can also touch base with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take, again, to give your take on Stranger Things season four. I don't know how long this is going to be. Our last one was quite long. Uh, much like the not length of the enough. episodes in this season, but also not long enough. So we don't know how long. I, I'm not going to put a cap on this. Let's just we'll discuss it until and let that discussion have its day. But without further ado, let's talk volume two. I think we should just do this like you know we'll have we'll have our discussion it'll be an hour right and then sure. they have to wait a month to get volume two of our discussion yeah i think that sounds like a good idea and like they won't know if the vfx are fully finished or not <laughs> on our podcast okay so i suppose just like in general mm-hmm. what did you, you what did you guys think of the finale to stranger things four which we all discussed before we we love the season but yes. uh what what do you think of the finale eric i'd like to come to you first because you, you you were avoiding talking to me about it uh i actually thought it was probably because i had to wait a month for it, slightly underwhelming oh okay now when i say that and i am <laughs> he, she is he is shooting shots at the world <laughs> um, no go on now in saying that it's still a amazing compared to a lot of other stuff i've seen in the last couple of years but it's in comparison to volume one i think it didn't live up to the month-long wait okay okay do you think do you think if 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 they had a wait and released just the whole thing in july yeah do you think you would have just that would be like kept at the momentum and kiss kiss right there that would have been amazing yeah okay okay interesting okay and obviously we're going to go into further detail adam Mm -hmm. what did you think of of the finale it was an incredible finale. Um, the two-hour episode at the end didn't feel like that, which is weird. Right. Mm. And I'm wondering, like, could it have been split? They could have possibly split it, maybe. I don't know if that would have killed the momentum of it, but that was, like, what what an episode. I think the, A lot happened. I think the, um, the, the first episode back was a bit, like... Like it was, it was a good episode, but I, I remember when it ended, I was like, "Jesus, this is probably the darkest episode they've ever done." And it was such a weird, like intro back into it because we've we've been waiting for ages, and it's just like yeah, straight right. in, like fucking blah, blah, like shit's happening, yeah, yeah. I'm like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, probably almost needed uh, to watch all of season four again. Again, and yeah, right, right. Need into it, of course, something. yeah, yes. <laughs> you mean you didn't? You mean you didn't watch didn't it all chance, again? No. I tried to. I, I got you as kidding far me? as um, um, uh, Dear Billy. 
That's, I got, I got, yeah, that finished no, no, right. so, yeah. Hard, hard, hard to top that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> hard yeah. to top, dear Billy. Um, I also really, really like, I loved the finale, I thought it was amazing. Um, but I do have nitpicks, and as we go through, and I, I think it'll be interesting, like the stuff that's like really worked for us, and then maybe if there was any stuff that's like, I wish they had done that slightly differently, or I wish they'd fallen true on that, or whatever, whatever it is, right? But I mean, there was a lot in it, and I do think that it actually could have been shorter. That's I I think there's moments that it was like this is dragging a little bit, and it's oh, yeah, unnecessary. Okay. Like moments where people stop and start talking, and mm-hmm. it's like, unless one of you is about to die why are you talking right now <laughs> it's like is this a final conversation and are you priming me for this and then like they'd be fine and i'm like why did you do that then why what are you doing are you just playing on my emotions here That's which i feel exactly like they, they doing. actually were i feel like the authors the uh, the 100%. writers were oh uh, yeah um but anyway why don't we start with just to, like like much like we did with um volume one but we had a lot more episodes to get through then just take each episode on its own for a moment, just to focus in on some of the stuff there. There's probably a lot more to talk about with the final episode, to be honest. But mm, yeah. um, there is some stuff in Papa that is worth talking about. Um, yeah. So let's start with episode eight, Papa, which Adam, you said is like, whoa, there was a lot in it, right? It was kind of, it was quite action packed and straight to it. Yeah. Um, Eric, what did you think of that episode? Or is, is it hard to like, separate the two have they melded no into it's one? not hard to separate the two i've heard mixed I reviews just, on that episode i yeah i don't remember a lot really happening in that episode it was a lot of just prep time they were just prepping for episode nine so right and you're referring like, to like the guys going to uh war zone for example to pick up all their weapons and right stuff. they're going to war zone and uh, and i thought yeah I have, I do have nitpicks with these two episodes as well. There's some things where I'm like, why did you do that? Because there's no payoff. You, you've done it and then, and now you're undoing it like two minutes later. So I thought it was a bit sort of like, like Papa stopping 11 from leaving, right? right She's right, going right. to leave and then he yeah. jabs her and then he keeps yeah, yeah. her. And then two minutes later, oh no, we have to leave. It's like, why didn't you just have him leave? And in the moment of them leaving, the soldiers burst in. Or something, yeah, right. You know right. what I mean? Like, there's this. So, but yeah, I don't really think me and Dad were both a bit because I watched with Mom and Dad. We were both a bit kind of like, I, if the helicopter scene didn't happen, if that whole ep, Star Wars Episode Four shooting in the hallway, I thought that too. I thought yeah, that too. That. <laughs> the helmets are shaped exactly like. It. <laughs> that was great. Uh, yeah, 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 if that yeah. stuff didn't really happen, nothing really big or explosive happened in that episode. That's interesting because I thought it was a really uh, I, I like I have heard divisive opinions on that particular episode. I thought it was a really strong, solid episode. I was really into it, mainly because it was priming us for the finale. And it was like, let's go. Like yeah. it opened with basically uh, Nancy being shown Vecna's plan and then her telling everyone what's coming, which yeah. is essentially her telling the audience this is what season five is going to be. Yeah, no, that that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. No, like, again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the episode is no, I'm getting you it, wrong. It, it, <laughs> I'm getting you so wrong right now. <laughs> it's in comparison to the others. It's so you hate Stranger of... Things. That's what you're saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I take for the record, we love Stranger Things. <laughs> we do love Stranger Things. Um, uh, okay, cool. Why did you think yeah. of, like, they killed Papa? Um, I should stop calling him that. I call him Dr. Brenner. Yeah, he's, a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not my papa. <laughs> he was always going to die, though, wasn't he? Um, I, yeah, I was so sure, though, that he was going to, he was going to be to in the end. five. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they're going to kill Dr. Owens. Um, hmm. It was the other way around. That caught me out. That, that caught me off guard. I was, I was surprised by that. Yeah, I was surprised they did kill him, him off. But it was a nice, it was a nice moment that he didn't get the satisfaction of 11 understanding yeah yeah that was nice yeah that he is... didn't get cl- like it seemed like she was going to say it like it, you could see it in her eyes that like she was thinking about saying what he wanted to hear just to put him at peace yeah and then she just didn't yeah and you know he didn't get that closure before he died no that was nice that was nice there was a cool revelation i thought where she basically says to him you've like like i suppose the whole program with the kids was only funded and allowed so that they could 
use it to fight the Soviets or whatever and spy on the Soviets and that kind of thing. But he, like Dr. Brenner had different ulterior motives for that whole program. Like he was just more interested in studying it and seeing how far it could go and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And I thought it was really interesting when she like kind of, you know, they've kind of retconned some of the stuff or just like looked back and went, what if we change what the motive was in the first place, which is you had me looking for Henry this whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that's what caused the gates open. Yeah. I thought that was, yeah. I, that I, was like, like, really I like that. Cool. Yeah. 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 Just, but he denies it though. Of course he, he does. It, but, but... but when you see the emotion in his face, I thought that was him yeah, giving that, away that's that. It's pretty clear that that's. It's okay. like she has gotten true to his real mm-hmm. motives. And it's more yeah. like maybe he didn't even realize that's what he wanted, but it's like she's right. And I don't like that she's right, but it's true. <laughs> like this is my fault mm. kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's willing to do everything he can to almost undo his mistakes yeah which is why i think at the end it was actually kind of i I felt sorry for that that doctor because yes he was quite villainous throughout but yeah it was uh i think at the in the end he felt like he was definitely doing the right thing but it was like for a very selfish reason but then at the very end realized that no she she really got true to him and that's why she like he like he unlocked the collar and stuff like that and let her go because mm. he realized that um she's uh, she knows what she's doing. So when she didn't give him that satisfaction, it was like, oh, that's because uh, he kind of had a bit of a like a moment yeah. of redemption. Yeah, like I think he. Could, mm. he I could think have though, changed, like I think. I think though, I think when you just think about her entire life, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's it totally you makes know, sense. like it's like, and also w- like when she finally confronted him on what you did to my mother. Yeah. Mm. And all he could do was justify. He's like, yeah, but she killed someone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, fuck you. Like, like look uh, at no, the state I, I she's think, in for the rest of her life. sense for so. Elle, Elle to do that. And I, I actually, I like that she didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I mm. don't agree with it, if you get me. So it's like, it's like it shows sure. that she's not, a, she's not Superman. You know, she's not like... <laughs> Or, or like you know, oh, I'll see the good in everyone. You're going to Arkham yeah. or something. You know, it's not that kind of thing. <laughs> Actually, that you, you brought that up. There's that's a great discussion, and it leads to another point. But like, there's a great discussion that Mike and Will have in that episode in the back of the the Surfer Boy bus, yeah. um, where like Mike is highlighting that he's like in the situation where Elle is Superman and I'm Lois Lane. He's like, but I'm not even like Lois Lane. Like, I'm not even as special as Lois Lane is. <laughs> like she's a prize winning journalist who does all these amazing things. And I'm just a sub kid. Like I'm a nobody. So he's like, so my greatest fear is I've realized that at some point she might realize how unspecial I am and that she doesn't need me. Hmm. And I thought that was great. I was like, there's finally a moment because Mike was like, he had probably the least to do in this season in terms of the major characters. Yeah. And he finally had a moment where I was like, okay, I could now see some of his vulnerabilities here about the whole Eleven thing and maybe why he's been so worried about saying I love you and fully committing mm. to the relationship because he feels like it's not going to last. Yeah, I actually think going on to that conversation, Noah Schnapp's performance there yeah, and in episode nine was fantastic. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's always that been whole... great though, hasn't he? He yeah. is great. But yeah. not only was his performance great, it actually, I, that moment is incredible i thought it was really really strong Mm. um it's probably the moment where he turns and looks out the window and puts his hand over his mouth to Mm. like cry into Mm -hmm. but the fact that he uses talking about 11 to come out to mike Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah and mike still doesn't get it (laughs) (laughs) because mike is just oblivious um but it's wonderfully written i thought it was really really tastefully i love that Jonathan did. Jonathan he got Jonathan to, totally to some degree. Understood. Maybe he doesn't a hundred percent, but he's like he knows something's up here. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, offers yeah. his uh, support then in the in the last one. And that's a great painting, actually. Painting yeah, what did you has... think of the painting when we eventually saw it? I think we all kind of knew, knew that that was what it was going to be, yeah. right? We yeah, yeah. we did say that we were like it's got to be their D and D characters. Yeah, I I like that it wasn't. Like it was a really good painting, but 
but mm. I liked that it wasn't so incredible a painting that it's like he didn't fucking paint that. Yeah, yeah it's not. <laughs> do, you, do you get me? Like, like there's a fine line you have to reach where it's like you gotta believe that this like teenager painted that in yeah, his yeah. spare time as someone who yeah draws but hasn't like traditionally painted their whole life or anything. Yeah. So, mm. um, so I like I think it looked like something a teenager who is decent at art painted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I couldn't paint it like, but also no. <laughs> it's, it, but it's also not fucking Van Gogh or something. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, you know, it, it's, well actually Van, Van Gogh is not that great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe, not the best maybe example. Like Mike Michelangelo maybe. Yeah. Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Raphael maybe or maybe leave the uh, examples Venture. to the artist. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it was cool. Um, he, yeah, Mike, think... Mike still doesn't get it though, does he? <laughs> Oh god no. no, no, he is no. over his head. Or does he get it? And he's just like he's because he can't reciprocate, he's just like nodding along on cool, cool. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think he, he understands. Yeah, he doesn't get it, does he? No. No, he doesn't. Maybe. But he, he Not knows yet. He, Maybe. he knows Will is gay, isn't he? Does he say that um, in season two or season three? No, he, well, he well, said he says in season three that uh, look, just because you're not into girls. Yeah, but I don't think... All right, so it's I, not really a full like, acknowledgement. Does it, does it mean you're gay or does it just mean it's like you're just not, you're just not interested? Yeah, your interests aren't yeah, there. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. 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 So, uh, so it's not clear. There's really, also a powerful moment. That was actually another good performance of Noah Schnapp there as well. He's been great. Like, he's, yeah, just, he's been fantastic, yeah. Trout. The only thing that's kind of holding him back is that he looks so much older than he's supposed to be because he had such a growth spurt. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That that makes him look a little bit odd in some of the scenes. And but that's up. absolutely it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's so yeah, deep. All the kids are like this. And he's like, "Hey, Mike." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. baseball. So, yeah, he's so <laughs> deep voiced. So that's sometimes is at odds against him in a scene, but it has nothing to do with what the performance he's doing. His mm-hmm. performance yeah. is excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. there's a funny conversation that the guys have in the Papa episode, where they're actually discussing like, "What are we calling him now? Is a Vecna?" Yeah. Is it Henry or is it one? Uh, how did they know? Because they've obviously written and filmed this a long time ago. How did they know that that was already going to be an internet thing? The Becca slash Henry slash one. <laughs> they even say it in it. Like, how are they so <laughs> ahead of the curve of what people will be like? Uh, here's the killing Vecna slash Henry slash one. You know, <laughs> that's exactly what I've seen online for the last month. Yeah. You know, how do they know? <laughs> But what are we calling them there? Like, let's 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 decide this. Vecna, because I don't like saying Henry or Vecna. one. Yeah, I gotta continue it's calling his, Vecna. His, I got the Vecna T-shirt. I'm calling <laughs> Vecna. <laughs> it's his new identity. It's this whole new thing now. He's he's, yeah. You know, or are we being... are we are we calling him the Mind Flayer? <laughs> well, we'll no, save that Vecna. for the next bit. We'll save that for the next bit. <laughs> yeah. But then he didn't he didn't call himself Vecna, did he? Was it, well. Doesn't matter. He calls himself a god. (laughs) I mean, you know, do you refer to Vader as Vader or Anakin? This is true. This is true. There's actually, um, if you read, is it (laughs) or or what? Boy, boy. Yeah. Why would I call Vader boy? I'm just thinking about young Anakin. Anakin. Oh, Vader. Yeah. Well, we always refer to him as Vader, and he didn't call himself that, so. He did not. That was the Emperor's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, if you actually read um, on Critical Role, the description of Vecna. Oh, it's spot on to Vecna. Like. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, well, it's, it's now it's like, because earlier on, okay, uh, we still thought it was a bit like um, strange how the kids came upon deciding to call him Vecna with the information that they had. Mm-hmm. But I fully understand why the writers. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Vecna, yeah. Especially with the So hand. it's like, so Vecna, also known as the Whispered One, the Undying mm. King, and the Lord of the Rotted Tower, is a powerful mortal-born archlich who achieved godhood. Yeah. Yeah. So they're essentially, in naming him that, telling us that he is mortal-born <laughs> and he will achieve godhood. <laughs> that's the yeah. whole That's the whole deal with him. I thought that was really cool. Um. I'm trying to think, was there any other big moments from Papa before we move on to the big finale? Um, I think I there was, was a lack of something from Papa. Um, because the, what ep- was that? the episode was it was um, overall a very enjoyable episode, but I just felt there was an emptiness as to like 
things like um how how he you know how he survived for example the demogorgon and um just right more of an exploration with the uh, it's weird that we're getting the dr brenner character it's weird that we're getting more about the upside down and all that kind of stuff through henry than we are through like what his whole operation was and um yeah i, it's I just weird feel like it's just... called papa and you still have more you almost have yeah you're still left I don't know. I, yeah i feel like um it, it that would that to me felt like this was going to be the lore dump of the series hmm. right and we didn't get that we actually just got yeah. uh uh okay a build up to his second death it's like yeah you know it's <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a bit weird yeah. in that there was, but there's some cool shit throughout the episode. It's just I think overall the arc of that episode isn't great, which is probably why it's divisive. But I think there's cool moments throughout the episode. I really love the like. <laughs> I think Argyle really became such a cool character in this one. In, All in right. terms of okay. like, his, his dialogue and the things he says, I just think it's so so funny. Or no, is that the next one? Maybe that was the next one. Might have been. I'm trying to think which was the one where they end up in the freezer. Oh, no, no, that's that's uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's okay. So it was more yeah. the second episode, or the last episode. Yeah. What yeah. I felt was weird about the, the second slash last. The, <laughs> yeah, with the episode of Papa was that I was like, I remember turning to Peg and I said, "Wow, I think that was actually the darkest episode yet." And she's like, "How the hell did you make that out?" It's like, well, there's no comedy in it. I thought there was Gar- a little bit gargoyle. A little gargoyle bit. Gargoyle says a couple of funny stuff, and then and then um they have Eddie puts on um the Mike Myers mask. Yeah, as it goes around. And runs and around at that. As if they, that's they funny. I didn't think hell. that was funny <laughs> as much as it was just a cool reference, though. I didn't uh, really I, see that as funny. I think that was supposed to be somewhat funny. And then when your one was talking about that, you know, it's not, you know, it was like, the, oh, those pair, like the, the couple looked pissed off. It was like, well, it's not really. Every day you lose your house and car one fell swoop. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah there was yeah, a few yeah. comedies. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I know, but it's just like throughout the season, there has always been like, you can nearly go every scene. There's like, a funny quip and in the moment of what they're doing like because you're we're always we, we spent our time yeah. with dustin and stuff like that mm. there's always yeah. some line in there but this one like even the way it started off like it's i do love the intro i do love the all that that was savage Back i thought it was brilliant yeah, yeah there, straight nancy. in which nancy's nancy. performance as well after she when she was explained to everybody what she saw was great yeah it was mm. uh, solid uh, there's some yeah. stuff that she explained that um it's like, it, what is that going to happen? Because, like, she mentioned a giant monster with a gaping mouth. With a gaping mouth, it was unlike it wasn't the mind flare that she just des- that she described. It was something something else. So it's mm. like, is that something else that we're going to see in season five, maybe Godzilla? And and she's yeah, could be. Go <laughs> but she does say so many monsters, which means there are so many types. Yeah, well, I suppose we're going to get like demo dogs, demo gorgons, demo bats. There probably will be. Demo giant, demo so rex, de- 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 <laughs> de- de- yeah, dem de- alien, the de- de- alien, the de- predator. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope so. <laughs> um, I thought as well. I have to say, I loved the inclusion. Well, first of all, I love whenever the gang come up with a plan. It always, I don't know why they they always sell it in such an exciting way of like, yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um and then they ended the episode with that remix of oh, the Ways. Did. Oh, and I was like, well, was fucking... oh, they're including it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. like I was like, let's go. Like, because I was going to myself and Ash were watching it, and we had kind of said to ourselves, right, we'll watch one tonight, mm-hmm. and then we'll have to watch the the final one tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? And then we got when because we were watching it late, Eric. So oh, okay. I see okay. your face, but like yeah. she did work all day. That's what I. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what we I, were working all day. Like we, we, so, we did though. We did separate it over two days. Yeah, we were gonna, and then as soon as that episode ended, I was like, you know, I don't gotta be anywhere in the morning. And she was like, neither do I. But let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that was good. I got, I it. got, I got very hyped in the pet of music. I was like, oh, oh, oh this is good. Yeah. There was also, I have to say, a moment in that episode that they. They did something that um, it's it was okay in the end, but it's something that I never thought would happen. Right? I have never been worried about Dustin, but in episode eight, they had me convinced that they were going to kill Dustin. And in episode nine, when that moment was coming up, I was like, "They really are! Stop it!" <laughs> 
had it, uh, they didn't, but um, and it was when him and uh, Eddie were playing, and like, okay, right, so, yeah, so now you know why, but. When they were playing, oh, and okay. and he grabbed Dustin, and he went, "Never change, Dustin, never." And I was like, "It's a red herring. It's a red herring. They want me to think Eddie, but it's Dustin." No, ah! That one hundred percent looked like they were going to kill Eddie. <laughs> I, I that's but that's why I was like, "That's too obvious now. That's too obvious." Okay. You know, Dustin will yeah. hurt more. All right. Um. But anyway, yeah, yeah. It, I think the they way- kill off Dustin. They'll just get a lot of people not wanting to watch it. <laughs> but the funny thing would be is nobody taught him. Everyone is like, "Oh, it's Steve. It's Steve. It's Steve." Right. Yeah, but yeah. nobody ever thought. Maybe and even with Dustin Steve's could. dialogues throughout, like it's like, oh, it was so like the, he's dying, the like, family right? and everything, the yeah. family and everything, and 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 explaining his love for Nancy. So, yeah. so let's then move on to the finale. Okay, you know what's what funny? a weird we... title for that one though. The I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it because I was like, what the fuck is that? Right, but then when once they kind of explain it, you're like, oh, okay. All right, I, I get I, it, but it's a weird name for like the. Final I would have called. I would have called the four chimes. Oh yeah, yeah, that would have worked as well. Actually, I would have. Because... I would have called that episode four chimes. Do you not think that's a bit spoilery? Well, not really, because really. without There's, context, it means plan. nothing. You know, no, I know, like, but it, if it, they kind of explain it, and they, they do explain they, it, yeah. but it's still kind of you're then more talking about the plan, mm. and it's about yeah. stopping the four chimes. Yeah. Plus, like, they had, like, episodes before called, like, you know, The Upside Down was the name of the last episode of season one. Mm -hmm. And you could have scrolled along and looked at the names of all the episodes. But until Mm -hmm. you're watching the show, you don't know what that means. So, you know what I mean? Or, like, The Gate was the name of the last episode for season two. The Battle yeah. of Starcourt Mall was the name of the episode for season mm-hmm. three. So it's like, you, you know, you know, okay, this is going to end with a battle in this mall that we're yeah. watching. But no, right? that, that, yeah, but that's so, what, like, all of those sound like finales. Yeah. The piggyback, and the piggyback does, does not, not sound like yeah, a season that's, finale. I don't think the Fantasy does either, but I, I don't know what they could have called it, really. But it certainly needed something epic. <laughs> the beginning of the end <laughs> of the start. Bit long. <laughs> of the thing. Of the yoke, dawn of the planet of the apes. <laughs> what if what if um, this storylines in the finale, which we didn't talk about at all in the last uh, or in Papa, um, is the whole Russian storyline? Right, I do actually have a great that. <laughs> the timing of that is, I don't know if you're calling Eric a dope <laughs> <laughs> or you thought it was dope. I thought it was dope. I thought all of Russia was amazing. <laughs> Let's hear why you thought it was dope, and then let's hear why Eric has a great put up. Okay, I'm gonna get things mixed up here. I, I'm, I'm sure. trying to remember what exactly was in eight and nine, but um, for a while I felt like the Russia thing was a bit of a drag throughout this season, and now finally right. we're getting like the action pack shit. I mean, there's it's Alien Resurrection in there, which is weird. It's a weird reference to bring in, but it's in sure. this fucking episode. It is, um, yeah. The tanks, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and it's cool seeing Winona like go up to those tanks and look at it. It's like, because uh, even the color tone is the same. That kind of mm. like the very same. So very same. That was that was really cool. Um, and then just them prepping with the because here you see that kind of Vietnam, uh, veteran coming out of Hopper getting all the the gear. And I love when he's having that chat with Murray and he's like throwing him the ammo and like he, he's like actually catching each one and it just like the the rhythm of that. Yeah, mm, true. Yeah. It was just incredible, and of course, the fight, the sword, the, the sword with the yeah, the sword <laughs> with the yeah, that was good. Especially was with good. like the the remix of running up that hill, playing with like all yeah. the other epic stuff that was happening yeah. as well. But it was like this is amazing, and I I laughed, but with like pure giddy joy, yeah, you know, yeah. like that kind of laughter you get where you're like, this is great, I love this. Um, yeah, and when he saw the sword, it was just like fuck. Yeah. When, it, when it came yeah. into frame, I was just like. Hmm, that sword is going to be used for something, and this is ridiculous because that looks like Conan the Barbarian sword. Like, yeah, not just oh, a yeah, normal no, sword. Was, this is no, looked, no, that this looked is a like fantasy the coolest sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's here one handing, shooting the demogorgon in the face with an AK, and then runs out of ammo, sees the sword, <laughs> picks it up. You're like, this is so and this, good. <laughs> and this, and this, yeah, and this, there's flames everywhere, yeah, and the yeah. music is epic, and it goes slow. slow and motion, actually, he chops his what he was. <laughs> And when he was getting ready, I was like, go on, chop his head off. Yeah, and yeah. he chopped the head off. I was like, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it was, it was So, so good. What? Really good. Yeah. 
But like, I think it's also very hilarious about it, right? Because yeah. it's awesome. The sword is so cool. The whole timing of it, the music. But when the Russian soldiers were getting those weapons, right? They got all the most basic of weapons. And then they saw that sword and were like, yeah, no, let's get that one. That looks badass. <laughs> let's oh, let's right, give yeah, our yeah. prisoners yeah. that yeah, badass yeah, yeah. sword. It's like yeah. there was a couple of like axes. Yeah, and, everything and else was rusty. Maces like, and like shit weapons. weapons. <laughs> but they were like, this sword is, lads, this is unreal. <laughs> We gotta throw this in there. <laughs> we gotta throw this sword in there. Like that looks so cool. Maybe they had a. Maybe there was like the group the Russians that had to go get the weapons. They were given like a budget, and one of them was like, "Lads, we have to buy this sword." And the rest of them were like, "If you buy that, we won't have enough to get like other good quality weapons. It'll be just shit." It's like, but look at this sword though. Like I cannot leave without it. It was like fucking Han Solo trying to leave without a couch in Blue Harvest. <laughs> I'm taking this couch. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Eric, um, I gripe with you loved that scene, but you had a gripe. Tell us your gripe. Oh no, I loved, I loved the whole. I did love the Russia section. Actually, I loved most of it. I loved what it was building up to and everything. Mm-hmm. It's the leaving to go back in when I there's agree a with helicopter that. in the prison, and they could have had some really cool prisoners and guards working together, trying to stop these demogorgons as they're tearing everyone apart and yeah. it would just be like uh, trapped in a prison, almost like something out of like Walking Dead season two, was it? Or three? Three, I think three. Yeah, three, yeah, they're, yeah. they're like trapped in a prison and stuff. And it just would have been. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it just would have been. <laughs> 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 Either he's we'll the greatest know. mime in the world. <laughs> I don't think this is on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's like How long do we wait? I don't know. It's like it's like he's uh like is it like petrified from Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah, very much so. I was really interested or in what he had. Han Solo, frozen in carbonite. A few moments later. It was funny. The whole thing. It was that you actually did that. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> huh? When your hands were like that is when you froze. And we're, Adam was like, he's frozen in carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> the whole uh, thing just cut out, shut down, static went into my fucking ears. <laughs> the light, everything just <laughs> fucking exploded. And I was it was, like, it was Vecna. It was Vecna. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, maybe I should but, stop saying negative things. You, you, you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he feeds on that. You were talking about how you kind of wanted the whole Russian prison thing. Stop to doing that with your hands, though. Before he <laughs> put leaves. your hands down. Put your hands down and tell well, us I'm what try- you think. I'm trying. <laughs> no, it's okay. You could use your hands. Yeah. No, I just think that. <laughs> I just- <laughs> Subconscious and burnt my hands. I gotta sit on my hands. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think that if they had a state in it, it would have made the story flow cleaner it's kind of like the, the again the papa taking out 11 only for two minutes later they're going to escape anyway mm, okay so it's like they're leaving for five minutes later to go back in so it just would have yeah. been a cleaner storytelling if you just keep them in there i, I wonder how they could do that though I, no i actually agree with eric's gripe i have that same gripe I, I, I love the stuff that happened in Russia, mm. but I totally went like even when they opened the grave to get out, I was disappointed in that moment. I was like, wait, no, hold on. There's shit to do here. Stay here. Yeah. I also wish that we got a little bit of a lore dump or an info dump while in the prison, like like in that room, in that lab, before everything gets out, like what, they why, find why something yeah. that explains everything about Russia, as in the Russian involvement with all this stuff. Because mm. what I actually do not want is to go back to Russia in season five. Yes. I, I also do not the, want the Russians to be in Hawkins in season five. I really want, I don't want a Russian Surely subplot. that's going to happen though. It is. I know, but I wish they resolved it all here and now. We're here, we're in Russia, yeah. we're in the prison, the Demogorgon's here, they have the particles from the mind flare. Let's solve this now, then mm. let's kill it all, then let's leave. Yeah, because you yeah, still I have like you still have the final fight because they obviously yeah you still have all that they're about to leave but obviously Hopper and and Joyce they recognize that actually if they leave those creatures get out and will massacre so many people yeah. in Russia so they can't leave until they're all dead 
So you can still build up to that fight, but it's just a, a you just tidy it and keep it cleaner by leaving them in the prison. And there's I'm sure they have a flame short their prison. Or at least we wouldn't be like, that's ridiculous. These prison guards having a no, flame only, short. The only, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I Murray, felt like it was a, a kind of a Mad Maxi moment, you know. We need to we need to go back. We need to go back in. Yeah, but, I don't um, know. And, and as well, the only, I, the only reason I think it's like, how do you, how can you achieve? Because I, I understand why they they did it. Like I felt like they they were always going to be in the prison, right? They're always going to have the mm. final showdown in the prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's um, it's they needed a way to figure out that there's a connection here to what's happened in Hawkins, right? As in, see, yeah, and I get that's why they did it. There's also the redemption arc for. Yuri, for Yuri, yeah, yeah, and right. it's like they, I think they needed those isolated moments away from the prison to allow those to to kind of flourish. I don't yeah. know. I think you would have had the same kind of a similar outcome, but like you kind of would lack those two moments. I think. So for their own storytelling, yes, that's exactly why they did what they did. Yeah. However just as an audience member one i don't need them to know that what they're doing is helping hawkins i'm perfectly okay with them just dealing with the shit they're dealing with and is and they don't even know what's going on in hawkins and two i don't care if yori has a redemption <laughs> but he's gonna play such he's a, a big role he is, in he is, season he is. Five. and he's a funny character and everything but sometimes it's nice to have a funny character who you'll never trust who's just so sleazy and you're just well, I think you, know. you can you can still do the. Well, they can still kind of put two and two together. Not in like a we need to stop this to help Hawkins now. It's we need to stop this before it ever gets back to Hawkins. So that's how they're right, right, out. yeah, yeah. Could, but yeah. it's and more of a because I think they have a obviously they they don't want to deal with this shit, right? They're so afraid mm. of this. But it was yeah. the love for their children that gave them the courage to do so. Right, but you're still now you're protecting the children from something that could get them rather than stopping something that is going to get them if you know what i mean no <laughs> i don't <laughs> well it's like it's like it's it's sort of like they just reason that if we burn these particles yeah. that's hurting vecna who we know nothing about yeah but we're just kind of piecing that together if we break back into this prison and burn these and as well they could have actually had all the same conversations like when they're in that part of the prison and they were locked off hmm. it could have been we need to phone Owens. Owens. Yeah. Yeah. And they could have gotten name. So they could have done everything in the prison. They could have. And and Yuri, I, I think Yuri, it would have been a cleaner way of doing it. And Yuri could have like, while they're trying to fight everything, Yuri could think to himself, well, I'm going to get the helicopter and I'm going to get out of here. But then, and like then he, that's maybe, when you have if, the moment. If he was going to leave them behind and yeah. then Dimitri has that conversation with him. Yeah. Because he's cool, he, like, he? he's great. He's great. I didn't think he was going to make it, if I'm being honest, no, yeah, because no, no, no. he kept talking about how his kids and everything. And I was like, oh, he's not making it back to his kid. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing them in season five. Well, they're definitely pairing him and, and Yuri as like oh, a, yeah, a duo definitely. in the next season, right? So if the yeah. Russians make an appearance, it's not yeah. it's, it's not for conflict. It's going to be them coming in to aid the US, and it's going to be like an alternate like end to the Cold War. Could be, yeah, and it yeah. could be that. Maybe that is what they're leading up to. Um, mm. But I just wish we learned something about the Russian involved. And we, I, I take it we will. We might just, yes, yes, at this yes, point. Yes. I thought it was just a good opportunity in that moment that in that lab there is something to be learned. Yeah, yeah. If it was a video game, that's where we learn. You know, <laughs> that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, you got to go around yeah. and pick up all the documents and read them. Yeah, yeah pick yeah. up the documents and, and listen to the audio recordings. That's yeah. that's uh, that's what I was waiting for. But ultimately, like the stuff that happened. Yes, I, lo- I loved. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. and the like, the demo dog chasing Hopper through the prison and everything like so fucking cool. Yeah. Loved that. Um, so then moving on from Russia, okay, we might as well talk about the California stuff before we talk about the Hawkins stuff because the biggest stuff really happened yeah, in Hawkins. Uh, so the California stuff. So Adam, you were talking about like Argyle, yeah, the who... pizza dudes. Yeah, go on, give us that. <laughs> tell us about the pizza dudes. <laughs> I, I I really loved the the overall dialogue there. Um, it just it, and I liked that when they went into the pizza place, and it was like basically a, another Argyle behind the counter, and I I right, immediately right. just thought of you know in San Andreas when you go into every Cluckin Bell. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just looks like uh, like there's there's your NPC here. <laughs> yes, very much so. Very much so. I was wondering where are they going with this, and then as soon as they're emptied out the freezer, I was like, that's actually clever. Mm. That is a really great way for Argyle to actually contribute something important to the <laughs> to the, to the party, yeah. even though he doesn't really understand it. But just when to say, we need a hot tub or a bath or something to fit her in, and he just like measured and went, yeah. I saw you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just like went to the nearest surfer boy pizza. I was like, let's empty out a freezer, fill it with all of our salt in the back. Like it was like, this shouldn't work, but it's working. It's I don't know why it's working. And I also did enjoy the pineapple on pizza. Yes, that was the very moment. Funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moment. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was good. before you deny. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you guys think about pineapple on pizza? I like I, it. I, yeah, yeah. I'll eat pineapple and pizza. I, I never under. I never. I'm an ace here. I'm an ace here. What's yeah, I'm, an, I'm a, You're a no. As in, I'm a no. No, pineapple pizza is a no for me. Okay. No. I I don't get like I understand if people are like I don't like the taste of pineapple and pizza, but I don't get the argument of pineapple should never be on pizza. Right. Because generally they say it's because it's a fruit, right? Fruit doesn't. Okay. Yeah. To be a pizza, and it's like, sorry, but that entire basing for your pizza is made from a fruit, so. Tomato, Tommy toes. Is there a, such a thing as a topping that should not go on a pizza, though? Surely, I feel like if someone likes something on a pizza, they can put whatever they want on a pizza. Charcoal. I think not so much. <laughs> not cool. so much what shouldn't be on it, but it's more yeah. the combination of things, right? Because I've had chocolate on pizza. Which, that's fucked up. Which you may say that's <laughs> fucked up, but no, I, I did. I did. <laughs> All it that is, is that is one hundred percent fucked up. <laughs> All it is is just a pizza base with chocolate on it. I I I understood that, <laughs> but it's not like you know when you hear I've had chocolate on pizza, you think oh there's tomato, there's cheese. And it's like no, it's actually just a dessert. Oh right right right, right. okay yeah. I get That's like cho- chocolate like spread. spread. <laughs> it's chocolate spread on pizza dough. Yeah exactly yeah. Is that what it was so right? It's just cake really. Okay. But bearing in mind then what a, a regular pizza slice would be, which is it's it's the dough, it's the tomato Ray, sauce, the me, <laughs> the sauce, <laughs> and the, the you know the the cheese, yeah. And then after that, everything is an extra topping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that absolutely like in that case, chocolate should not fucking go on? No, that. chocolate shouldn't go on it then. No, that no, is no, disgusting. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But then is it to each their own? Like, if someone likes yeah. a bit of dairy milk on top of their tomato sauce, like. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I think, like, you know what? You can get, like, kind of crispy banana. Like, you kind of get the banana you slightly fried or something like that. Oh, yeah. Right yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. I, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd like, you find, like, fruit and fiber and stuff. Uh, which is yeah. Like a breakfast cereal for anyone who doesn't have fruit and fiber. Um, like, I think that might work on a pizza. But if you had well, it. Bacon's favorite pizza is banana and, pa- and bacon. Oh, Whoa. wait! Now, is the banana is is the banana dried or the banana's not dried? Well, it wouldn't be, but once you put See, it, that's I was, about to, I was about to say when you make it not dried. Once you put it in the oven, though, it will yeah, be. It dries out, obviously. Oh, like, so you I put was it thinking, on I was fresh. Thinking, and then you, yeah. I was thinking. See, I was I was about to say like if you cook the pizza and then put the banana slices. On oh, no, sure. oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, that is no, no, that's no, that's a no. Yeah, yeah. So in yeah, more yeah, kind of like. I suppose more tropical places they put they put fruit on pizza. It's, you know, this... I, I don't know, know if you would define. There's a whole coconut. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to coconut uh, on pizza for sure. Yeah, kiwi, kiwi on pizza. That'll happen too. I want to oh. know from everyone who's listening to us, um, what is like the weirdest pizza topping you've ever had? Mm-hmm. Um, they're all gonna say pineapple. And, and did you like <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. Is pineapple as weird as they've gone, or have you ever had a weirder topping than that? Like pi- I, pineapple's not weird anymore. But then this show is set in the 80s. Maybe it was still kind of a new thing then, you know, in terms of like the larger pop culture around pizza, you know, try before you deny. Uh, Absolutely. But this is also in California or that uh, quest line is where we get the Jonathan and Will scene that we were talking Mm. about earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, What a wonderful scene. Yeah. Where it's like, finally, Jonathan feels like he's, Contributing something here. Like, I know he's been driving around and everything, but like he just he had so little to do this season. Yeah, he's very lost in it, really. And I felt that conversation was such an important one of like, I'll 
always be your older brother. Like it'll always be here to look after you. I thought I was really strong. Nah, and another way of like saying, like I know without saying it. You know yeah. what I mean? They just they found wonderful ways of saying things without saying it. Mm. And it's like, and if you don't get it, I don't. Are you paying attention? You know what I mean? Because uh, I feel like some people are still going. So are we going to find out about Will's sexuality or what? It's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like, they have said kidding? it over and over again. What do you <laughs> to want them to do? Yeah, like, <laughs> I want him to come out really loudly. <laughs> you know, it's like, he's said it. He has said it. Please pay attention to the performance. Yeah. Um, d- and then I suppose while Elle is in the, you know, she's in her sort of trance mind. Yeah. Backing off Max and stuff. I don't know. I suppose the rest of her stuff more is in the Hawkins storyline, really. But uh, during that moment, and she's in a weakened state, Mike finally tells her that he loves her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was a little bit disappointed with that scene. So was I. I have to say. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think. Eric, was- how, how are you? Uh, you haven't said anything. <laughs> well. It's cliche, isn't it? It's like, oh look, it's it's the it's the dark moment of the of the show. They're all gonna like pretty much lose. Well, of course, Mike is now going to say he loves her, and then she's gonna find the inner power, and they're gonna say the power of love. Yeah, you know, like, I got why they did it. It was her. It, that was her lifeline. That was her. Yeah, like mm. there's no point playing a song to her. She needed to hear the words. Those words from Mike. Right. She's yeah. waiting for it all all season and for however many months or years even. Of them being together, she never actually heard it. My problem is with it. It was something that we knew was going to come. It was something that they'd been building up to. It needed to happen at some point. I would have preferred to happen while she was conscious, though. Oh, no, I don't she's mind a... where it happens. I was just it, for me, it's more just the delivery of it. I, I didn't like. All right, okay, okay. Because just that she's such a good actor, I wanted to see her actual reaction to it. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like from a performance standpoint, I actually wanted to see the two of them in a moment where he finally tells her he loves her. And maybe it was in a moment where he thought he nearly lost her or whatever way it would have had to write it. And maybe it, there was no room. Like maybe it needed to happen in the Papa episode where he finally found her. Mm. I don't know, but I just, I wish she was conscious for it because otherwise it was just a floating voice in the air, you know? And then she just went, I have the strength now. <laughs> It just, I don't know, it took the power out of it for me, even though it's what gave her power. Interesting. Mm. No, I, I, I felt it, like it, it it worked. It was just, it went on. <laughs> it's like, right. how many times, there should be a little counter for how many times he says, I love you in that moment. Right, right, right. Like, it's just like, yeah, okay. All right, like, we get like, it. I love you. I love you a lot. Though I, I love have you to very say, much. If I was in that situation, I'd find <laughs> it very difficult not to just end it with from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know yeah, you're like, nearly dying I know, here, but I, know, like, I, I know. just can't not this is, do this. This is yeah, fucking hilarious. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> you gotta have a sense of humor about this shit. <laughs> it's like all like time, up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if he didn't say I love you, and I was like eleven. There's something I have to tell you. And they're all looking at him. It's just like from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> should we let's then, sketch on that? No? Let's this let's next transition on to everything that happened in Hawkins, which is really the big. Finale. This is where the big shit was going down, really, yeah. right? Yeah, Hawkins. yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like the most All interesting right. storyline in the whole season was Hawkins. It always was. Mm. Um, but where do we fucking start, man? It doesn't even have to be in order. Just it, it, what stuff do we want? It's oh fuck it. Actually, let's go straight for it. Adam. You've got the Metallica T-shirt on. Yeah. Yes, I can't believe it. I was so fucking happy. I mean, we uh, we we, we, think we we were wondering ever since the trailer, what song is he going to play? Like, we didn't even yeah. know who Eddie was yet. We were like, what song is he going to play on top of that trailer? Play it. Yeah, and it's gonna be bitching. And they kept it right up till the season finale, and it was Master of Puppets by Metallica. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Man, when it I kicked in, you. I was like, this is great. Can we? Was, can we? Can we now have this play? On the top of the charts now on, on radio stations across the world. Yeah, these Metallica <laughs> guys are going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get huge. They're going to get massive. Yeah. If, that, if Kate Bush is anything to go by. 
Yeah. He's Metallica kids. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone knows Metallica. <laughs> For sure. And even that surprised. I'm I'm happy that um like th- that is a well known Metallica song. Like I mean, any Metallica fan is gonna be like, oh, yeah, come on, that's that's so famous. Mm. But in terms of like general, what's out there? Like I'm happy it wasn't Enter Sandman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like I love be, Enter but... Sandman as the song, but yeah, because if you have this guy who's playing, yeah, well, first of all, it's not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be like, it'd be like he wrote. So it. that's <laughs> yeah. Like yeah imagine <laughs> he wrote he wrote Enter Sandman. That'd be so fucking funny. Yeah. The thing is, thematically, Enter Sandman would have worked. <laughs> yes, but yeah. actually, thematically, Master of Puppets worked yes. because we also learned. So it's like, no, yeah, obviously he was playing it as a song to like distract and help the heroes. But then it was playing over Vecna chasing a, a Max and everything as well. And there's a double meaning in that Vecna has been the master of puppets all along. Mind blown, Chris. Thanks for explaining that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I shall Where let you without you. <laughs> I shall, I shall let you host the rest of the episode, Eric. I, I am sorry to have bored you there with my. <laughs> that was wonderful, Barnes. Thank I got, you. I got burned more than Vecna. Um, what did you think of that, though? Actually, that oh, uh, that was they revealed that he is oh, behind the mind flayer. Uh, that was really cool because the imagery for that world was so alienly awesome. Right, and seeing all these like creatures going about their their world and stuff like that, I was like, that's so cool. And then seeing this weird, almost b- dusty brain kind of floating in the sky. But then I thought it was a bit too like, hold on now, seriously, like when he's kind of reaching his hand and it starts to take on its shape, but it just happens to be like the shape he drew, like he drew the spider, like for ages he was drawing the spider top down. And then all of a sudden he draws the spider front on and it's like somehow it looks like the wide flare. And I'm like, ah, no, that's a really bad drawing of spider. No, is no. he not drawing? No, he, he, he wants to be spider like, but he was basically drawn. This is what I want to be. Yeah, he was drawing his ideal self. Oh, and then he, he found the means become. to create his ideal self. Yeah. So he, okay, he, no mind, thank he you. Uh, genuinely, thank you for this. explaining that. Um, yeah, you see now, fuck you. <laughs> 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 I like Some the images. That he's... <laughs> yeah, the imagery is cool. The, the CGI again. Do you think the, this the... is actually hell? Because uh, he, when he no. when he's walking around it and you see the demogorgon uh, in the distance and the colors mm. and everything like that, it like it looks like you know Constantine. Yeah, and, it and looks they, pretty. They, they fucked look up, like right? the, the demons in Constantine, nearly the way they're crawling around. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, just, I kind what's, of feel like it is just an alien world. What's interesting to me is um, I've heard like lots of debates of people going, where is that place though? And how did they get to the upside down? And I was like, that is the upside down. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm imagining when it's the just... portal opened, Hawkins kind of bleeded into this world. And now that's why it's stuck in 1983. I believe so, Eric. Thank you yeah. for explaining that. <laughs> no problem, Chris. <laughs> No, but I, but I think you're right. I, I do think that is what it is. And I think this is this is what the Upside Down looked like. Mm. It just no longer looks like that. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that people have a different take on that. Or um, Vecna maybe, himself maybe we're wrong. have been the kind of populating it as, as well. But yeah, the fact that it's like... Stuck in that 1983. That, yeah, that kind of indicates that it is the moment when L opens it. Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting that L had the ability to open gates, which was a power he didn't have, which is why he was stuck there for so long. And it's a power that he then tried to take from her in season three. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yes. And now is able to do this. Because hmm. it's like, because otherwise it was like, well, why didn't he do this all along? The whole hmm. just connect with someone and kill them. Um, but uh, anyway, anyway, moving on from that. Uh, so Eddie had his... Uh, uh, triumphant moment playing yeah. Master of Puppets, the most metal concert ever. Um, but then they killed him. <laughs> yeah, I, I did have to cool hold back tears. You are cool with that? Mm-mm. I didn't want Eddie to go. No, I didn't think he would though. I actually thought I was like, yeah, hey, he's got to be in season five. He's... I thought it'd be too predictable to to 
kill him. That's why right. I wasn't cool with it. it. It's not so much like a like I I feel like you know he he maybe kill him off in season five if you want to kill him off. But I right. felt like there's uh there's there's more room for this character in the party. Mm. You know? Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him stick around, but I I guess I think there's an element of them saying he he kind of can't just walk around Hawkins after this because there's still but that's that's what would make it interesting. Yeah, I I get you. Yeah. Would it be would it be the same story dragged out though? Uh, well, I just don't think they got to really explore that in this season enough. Like the, the him in hiding thing. The the whole town having this no, weird yeah. religious fanatical uprising i guess and trying to hunt down the hellfire group yeah yeah right there'll right. be a bit of a midnight mass moment there Ugh. yeah Ugh. don't remind me of that show <laughs> <laughs> that show's fucked up <laughs> <laughs> you haven't watched that go watch midnight mass actually everyone it's, yeah, it's uh, fucked it's, up it's, it's fucked up <laughs> um <laughs> and if you like long monologues you'll love it yeah. uh, <laughs> Eric, what did you think of the fact that they, they killed off Eddie? I had to hold back tears because if I didn't, Mam and Dad would laugh at me. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was. It was a really beautiful... It was a beautiful uh, emotion and they played the music hilarious. from season one when they found Did Will's it? body and I was Did like, it? oh, this, this performance was beautiful. Um, and and Dustin just... was incredible in that scene. Dustin yeah, was he's, incredible he's, in that. Yeah. He's good. I mean, he's so he's good. good. He should Dustin get into just... he, That kid... <laughs> That kid could have a career. Yeah. He um he also was amazing, I suppose, in a in a follow-on from that scene. I know it happens much later, but when he speaks to Eddie's uncle. Yeah. It's mm. another great scene. Amazing. And I loved that the, like it's horrible what's going on, but I love that the uncle's going in, he's taken down the defamed pictures of Eddie and mm, putting yeah. up new ones. Yeah. Like beautiful, like really beautifully handled. Like yeah. I think the whole Eddie dying thing is I didn't want him to die. Because I like him, yeah, and I want to see him around. So it hurts. Yes. You have to kill someone that people like, though. You can't just yeah. kill people that everyone's like, yeah, that's fine. But like, I, I'm I, okay with that. But for that reason, I think it should have been someone else and not Eddie. I got you. Maybe someone that was a more serious regular. Yeah, someone who almost died. <laughs> Are you referring to Max? I'm referring to Max. I think like that because uh, when do. that happened, yeah. I was like, "Oh no!" Like uh, yeah, I really horrible. didn't think they would go through with it. Yeah. Um. And I like I'm interested to see where it this goes now. Like I think that this opens up like a really cool story arc, but um, I I just think that would have hit me more. I think not that I didn't like Eddie. I really liked Eddie. But I almost felt that was too obvious of a death that it didn't actually impact for me. Oh, that definitely impacted me. You know, I have to say, it did impact me. Yeah. Uh, poor it was Eddie. a great moment. In, and it was fighting a... off the bats and everything. Amazing. Yeah. But I do also agree that I, because I wouldn't have done, like, I, I don't think it was like a one or the other. I would have been as well as. I would have, um, I would have fallen through on Max and I would have killed her. I actually, what I would have done with Max, because I have a slight gripe with how long the ending goes on for. Oh. Based on the fact that it's like, yeah. You like the Snyder Cut, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when they when they finish it off, it ends. Like, this um, is like really No, it long. doesn't. No, it doesn't. The Snyder Cut fucking never ends. <laughs> it just goes on and on. <laughs> Setting up sequels that'll never happen. <laughs> yeah, but I think... The anyway. Problem- is that's like the portal is open it's two days later that's like fair enough okay like we've seen in the past a portal being open it does take the guy like nearly a year to get out or start building some digging some holes like <laughs> <laughs> yeah right okay so, but this is a giant portal <laughs> it's a giant giant portal and no one kind of realizes it's a giant portal for two days um I think what I would have done was actually have that Max didn't die in the house and that she's just blind and she's in the coma and actually end season four with her dying in the hospital and then the portal opening up. So do you have that holy fuck moment? Because really for me, it just kind of felt like an hour of, okay, all right, you're getting everyone meeting together. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, but when is when are they making their move though? Because I know this is going to end with 
expecting him making this move. So when's that happening? When's the monster? When is the giant monster with the gaping mouth going to burst out of this hole? Right, right, right. So I was kind of waiting a long time for that to happen. Why would if they reversed it and had that Max was fine and then died at the end of it and the whole town exploding open? Then you're like that. Oh, I can't wait for season five. Holy fuck! I can't believe the whole town is going to explode and now everyone's going to, you know. I still can't wait for season five. Right? Oh, yeah. I still can't either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very, I'm just it's very kind of cosmic I get what you're saying, kind of thing going on with the setup for season five, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. As well as I suppose, like I mean, there is a sense of um, that now we're going to be in a post-apocalyptic. Yes, yeah, it's right? it's going to be the mist. Um, or yeah, yeah, something like that. Silent Hill for sure. Yeah, oh, big time. Yeah. Those flakes falling ever. Like I loved when they were like, it's snowing. I was like, yeah. Oh, like, like our Ominous characters and we as an audience know it's like, you're fucked. You're all fucked, you know? Um, I, yeah, just on the Max's death thing, not only did I think she was fucking wonderful mm-hmm. when she was like, in the whole chart, the whole episode, but when she yeah. was like dying and saying, I don't want to die. Yeah. yeah. And so was Caleb. Yeah. This was Lucas's best season, his best arc. I yeah. think he was fucking incredible throughout. I, I'm so interested in where he was going, but in that moment, he was excellent. So good. But I, 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 I would have just, it's like, look at, you're already breaking my heart here. So follow through, like let her go. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I, I know I'm sure. Look, they probably have great plans for Max. And when we see season five, maybe we'll be happy. We're like, Oh, thank God they didn't kill her. Cause that really had a great payoff or something. Yeah. But just at the moment with the information that we have, I was like, we already saved her once mm. and it was such a triumphant moment that I don't think you can do that again. Plus I'm not happy with the way they saved her, which was Fourth 11. El- oh, yeah. Well, 11 doing the st- start and heart thing, because to me, I was like, I don't want 11 to have that power. Is that what it is though? I don't know if that's. What yeah. Well, doing. Sh- yeah, because they like they had a whole scene where Lucas talked about how her heart stopped for a minute and yeah. then it suddenly started again. Well, yeah, that's what happens when people die and come back to life. But and I, she I had don't... her hand on her chest, like I, that's a hundred percent what she did. No, I don't. I I think she was kind of reaching in, and it's similar to the whole the way she's able to enter people's happy memories and bring them back, kind of a thing. I don't think it's a physically her starting her heart again. But it's because she was able to tap into Max's happy memories that she was able to pull her back from the darkness. But then I, I think her I mind thought that was... is, is lost, though, you see. And I think that's what's going to be interesting with season five is that her body's here, but her mind is missing yeah. somewhere. It's going to be like a Neo. Oh, yeah. no, I have no doubt they're going to do something interesting with it. I mm. just... I, I, I wanted to be able to say more people died. You're fucked yeah, in that, in in that finale. Because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> I, like, I heard that like, the Duffer Brothers... Now, this is what Dad told me, that the Duffer Brothers said five characters were going to die. 22, in fact. 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, but I, like, I, I was yeah. going through all the main characters. I was like, right, Papa, Eddie, the the Demogorgon. Do we count the Demogorgon as one Jason? of the characters? The, Jason is one Jason, of the characters. The, the, what, a death. Death. what a death! Yeah, what a death, actually! What a oh, but, no, that was great. And, and also <laughs> that fight, though his performance. That, that whole I love that. <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite moments of the finale was yeah. Jason versus Lucas. Yeah, and the tension of like even when he like adjourned the fight, they don't like focus in on it, but you see him step on and break the headphones. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Oh, you fucker!" You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just I was so invested it, in that fight because it meant almost... more than what, like. For Jason, it meant like fuck you, um, you and your scumbag friends like killed Chrissy. Yeah, right. And that's what it meant for Jason. But for Lucas, it meant so much more. For Lucas, it lit that fight literally meant like if you don't stop, the world could end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's, such an important conflict. It was great. It's it's one of those moments where like if we were there in a moment, we'd be like Joseph Gordon Levitt at the end of Dark Knight Rises, when, just when he's like when he steps on the micro the the. the Heads. Oh right! It's right, the equivalent right. of when the guys blow the bridge. Yeah, yeah, you like, idiots! You, yeah, you doomed us all. Ah, so yeah. good. Such yeah, a really. Moment. It's such a he's that is the scenes like that frustrate the fuck out of me though. Like uh, why? Because you, you know when you see characters like that, and you're just like you just want to be able to talk sense into them, and it's just they're yeah, beyond, yeah. Oh, they're sure, beyond sure. any kind of reasoning because they're so emotionally driven. It's like mm. oh, those type of characters just annoy the shit out of me. <laughs> 
I, in, I, in but a, I take like, it was in an effective yeah, way. Like it's supposed in an effective to be way. Yeah, yeah. Annoying, it's supposed to, but, yeah. Um, I, t- I, I think he was a great character overall throughout mm. the season, the Jason character. I, think I do he think was... they were a little bit, uh, I don't know, there are, it's it's a story arc that's like, there's a, there's a whole extra story they could do there that's just mm. somewhat not fully touched on or tapped on or something like that. Then I get you. And the military guys are two, oh, they're two um, kind of opposing forces that have right. very little to do throughout the season but their input obviously have a very huge impact yeah um at at the end but that's why i'm i'm hoping and i'm glad that at the end of that season you see them driving through the town you can see the church and uh they're they're having people coming in and they're talking about the evil rising and they're like you know come pray so they they still have that religious fanatical thing that they could kind of thing happening could right? introduce into the next season so i'm i'm hope i'm looking forward to seeing where that's going to go because it was interesting seeing jason in that like hall and the, the police officers were trying to like reason with everyone and he, he manages to rally the the whole town up against hellfire yeah. club and yeah. it looks like yeah. that's going to continue on yeah i would say it will a bit and i think and that's the thing the guy playing jason like i just like that it was a very different jock character to hmm. Like, like Billy is an arsehole and he bullies because he's got issues going on at home, right? So it's like, you understand that, okay, he's got trauma, but the reason he's going out and being an arsehole, like he knows he's being an arsehole and he's doing it on purpose. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. either to try and feel a bit better about himself or to feel a bit stronger or whatever, right? Jason wasn't going around to bully for the sake of bullying lot. No, 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 and in and in his mind was justified in what he was doing, and it was so like the moment he walked into like the Creel house, the haunted house, like, and he goes up to the attic, and he sees first of all Lucas, who he now knows was lying to him all along and was in Hellfire and was like tricking him, but then just this blue lamp and her in this weird fucking trance, and he's like, "What the fuck have you done to her?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's gonna be so hard to explain, but it's adding up to everything that he already thinks. Right. Yes, like yeah, it's yeah. all it's like already feeding his uh you know presumptions about the Satanist cult and everything. So mm. it was so well done. Like I thought it was so good. His performance always reminded me of like uh early years Tom Cruise. <laughs> I've heard someone else say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit like that actually. Yeah. <laughs> his mannerisms. Um, I thought as well Lucas and Max were incredibly effective in the scene where basically they were getting back together. Mm. With the writing. With the writing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good. It's excellent. So good. What do you think of her going to the snowball as her favorite memory? Ash was that was cool. Ash, Ash called it. She was like, "Oh, it's got to be the snowball." Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was nice. Nice callback. It was cool when she was there, and you know, the song "Every Breath You Take" was on, and then it like changed. Yeah, and too. the whole place started changing. The balloons are bursting of blood and everything. I was like, oh, "This that was is so." This is so Stephen King. Like this moment is really Stephen King kind of stuff. And I liked Elle's entrance too, which was so kind of like, oh yeah, here we go. But I remember like at that moment, I, down. I had to pause it to go check on something. And, and I was like, there's an hour left. <laughs> yeah, right, you know right, I mean? right. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? So there are moments, I think, from there onwards that this is where the dragon out starts to occur in, in the way they edit things and the way they pace things. It's a lot yeah. of like... I think it's more of a stylistic choice more so than you know for storytelling reasons like Elle does a lot of walking around like she's walking with a purpose and she's walking here and she's walking over there it's like I see a memory and she walks and it's like surely you'd be in much more of a hurry here um yeah right right I don't really know how, on, let's go let's go let's go <laughs> I don't know how to navigate through people's mind palaces but you know yeah. try and do it with a bit of I need to get there um and that kind of slows the pace a bit as mm-hmm. well as like people getting trapped so steve gets trapped and nancy gets trapped and that moment it's like it looks like they're being choked out it's like they're being choked out for a long time those are really ineffective vines or he's just i don't know that or he's toying to, yeah so that that kind of stuff seems to really drag mm. um and the way l then gets which is a really cool image is the way she gets essentially crucified in front of a um a stained glass picture of a rose it's so mm. fucking metal but um 
<laughs> that bit kind of goes on a little bit too um and then we get sure. um mike's really elongated way of telling well he straight up says i love you but i love you i love you i love you i love you a long t- like that goes on forever too so i yeah. think there there are moments that they could have gone chop 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 yeah yeah i, I agree that, with that quicken that pacing up a bit but uh overall this is the definitely the best season finale to all of them and i think overall it, it encompassed with everything we've seen up to see in season four so far i think season four is the best season of stranger things hmm. i think quality wise that absolutely has to be yeah season it one is, will always have a little special place in my heart but... it is but when you go back <laughs> but, and watch season uh, yeah. one you're like hmm there's actually very little here other than like the the cool references and stuff but i think season yeah, four is the moment you. now where they're like we've made our own thing and we have our mm. own I have, of mythology course, there's, there's right and but... well as well the word for um you know like if you're to put a word to describe each season like season one might be like creepy and or season three was fun right season four is epic it really yeah, did hit that so epic quality packed. Like this yeah. is like huge, and to be honest, even while watching the season four finale, I was like, "How are they going to go bigger than this in season five? Like, how could they go bigger than what they're doing in all of this world, stuff?" Man, it's always the world. Yeah, yeah. First, you start and then they in the have house, to, they have to fight, God. and then the street, and then, yeah, that's what God at the end. It, it well, fight, you always do. fight God at the end. <laughs> they actually do have to fight a mortal that risen to godhood. Yeah, they do actually. Do you yeah, think the end, hell. the way they're standing there looking at it all, is a bit? Um, what's that Resident Evil? <laughs> you know, the end with their Res- was- five Resident Evil five. They're all on top of the yeah, uh, yeah, White yeah. House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have all the the enemies. Like, uh, that would be. I I can't wait to see season five. Obviously, um, and I think they're gonna do a really great job. It's obvious that the military are gonna get involved, but there is a yeah. huge fear of it becoming like a twenty eight weeks later after the twenty eight days later. Right, okay. Being such yeah. a personal story to being such a huge battle, and uh, it's going to be cool, but I, I there is a fear of that it'll lose. Right. I think they've some... found ways, though. Like, okay, they, what they can't do is have, like, in episode one of the next season, really, is like they're just hanging out and playing D&D and we're having a bit of fun before no, it all kicks not. off, right? Yeah. We can't do that because of the way they've ended this. However, they might do a reverse of what they normally do, which is like they normally start off with a bit of fun and a hint at something darker and then get darker as it goes on and then deal with a big thing. So they might do it the opposite way where like the next season will start with we're in the shit, mm. but we'll end when it's all over. We will end in a nice, fun place. The kids theme will play in the last episode rather than the first episode. Um, yeah. We'll see like. But but what a fucking awesome last shot though! Like, yeah, so the music cool. like like I loved like Will's you know next day to go again and the, that theme started playing, but it was an orchestral version of it and it kept going and they walk out the fucking fields are dying and it just looks like Mordor. I was like, this is this is so fucking cool. Uh, I'm worried about the time jump though. They said there was going to be a time jump, and I was like, how can you do a time jump? Look of like it's right there on your doorstep. Unless they were lying about the time jump. I don't know. Oh, they yeah, could do a time uh, jump. Well, unless like they're like living in two it. Two hours later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two hours later. But unless they're like, they've been living in it. Like, and it's like. That's uh, what I'm wondering. Like, what are they going to do? Like a Lawrence Fishburne from Predators kind of a thing. Yeah, like they're all. But like, seasoned, I think. Uh, seasoned veterans surviving against the Demogorgons. I, I do think that with the military involved, like, and they might have Dr. Owens now as a. Um, what would you call it? Consultant on this kind of thing, but they might be doing like the only method that he knows until they find a better solution. It's just like wall off Hawkins, and there's military on the walls burning the stuff as it's coming, you know. And they've just been holding it back from spreading further. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're like until we get in there and kill this guy. Containers around the city, you know, like big a big wall of uh, shipping containers. To, what? to lock them all in. <laughs> oh, right. Is this Ar- like Ar- is that Army of the Dead? Army of the Dead stuff? Yeah, I'm just giving Eric another excuse to say Snyder's the blueprint. <laughs> ah, now do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the lightning and everything that was going on in, in Vecna's upside down realm was very Snyder. <laughs> the it was. Tones for sure, yeah. yeah. It was very yeah. Snyder. 
Yeah. Zack Snyder's blueprint, like. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was saying this to Adam yesterday, right? Not in that, you know, Zack Snyder's blueprint or any of that crap, but just that a part of me is now a bit like, I think everything should contractually have a running scene because running scenes just seem to be so epic. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, Dear Billy, and it was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. And if Eleven had it just ran through Max's minds, his our mind palace, that would have been so epic. Just run all the time. <laughs> yeah, Everyone should like just a, run. If there was a hurry, just never stop running to find the right yeah. memory. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe Tom Cruise is the blueprint. Actually, <laughs> yeah. he's blueprint. known the for running. a long time that running is what makes a scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 really interested to see whether or not um it, it looks to me that will is now going to have uh, a more proactive role in season five and i think it's about time because he's always been the guy running and hiding and now i feel yeah, like right. he has come out to some degree he has the support sure. of jonathan that he no longer needs to hide and he has this connection to to vecna um that here we now have an additional kind of character that has a, a benefit to the party other than just L because they've been relying on L now for fucking four, four seasons, seasons ever right? yeah yeah and also Max I think Max is also going to play a huge role to some degree as to being somewhat connected uh, although her mm. body isn't but her mind is that perhaps she's able to speak to L in this sure. dimension yeah, possibly. So we're gonna have three extra, three three characters now that are gonna have each of their own unique abilities. We're building up the X Men here, basically. Oh, 100 percent. Like the Hellfire Club as well. Name came from X Men. Yeah. So we just need to uh, find out a way that Dustin and uh, well, Dustin is a super smart dude, so that's that that's yeah. his power. Lucas, he's, uh, is the, he's, um, his power someone. is his mind. Yeah, it's um, what's that? Like super intelligence. What's that character? For is it Forge from X Men? Yeah, yeah, yeah Forge he's, is the he's, super he's guy. Yeah, yeah, he's just he, he, just he's yeah. just intelligent. Lucas has the strength. Um, Mike has the um, the well, same say things twice, but um, one louder than the other. Yeah, but doesn't Mike give a, a boost to everyone's morale? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's uh, his special he, ability. He cheer. <laughs> yeah, he throws <laughs> cheer on everyone. And uh, I do. Uh, I, and why not? Why don't we talk about like uh, predictions, hopes, theories for season five now? Now that we are where we are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. I do hope that that painting that Will painted is kind of a vision of something that will come to fruition. I really want a scene in season five, which is something we've never actually had when you look at the entire season, where just the four key kids, Lucas, Dustin, Mike, and Will, have weapons and fight a big monster because it would go right back to just their original D&D game. Mm, yeah just the just the four of them so not jonathan with them not steve not 11 just those four going into an epic battle together as like the four friends who have grown up like i just think that would be an incredible scene give I think will be the amazing. flamethrower so they can cast fireball yes <laughs> <laughs> fuck yes <laughs> do not cast protection yeah cast fireball <laughs> Yeah, 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 and like Mike has a sword and shield, just like in the fucking painting. And uh, Dustin has the axe. Dustin has the axe, and Lucas. The, yeah, Luke, just, it's, Lucas it's just needs a bow and arrow at this point because he he used to have the slingshot. He needs uh, he needs to become an archer. Just give him a gun. <laughs> <laughs> or a gun, yeah, sure. Well, I was about to say because in the painting he actually has a sword and he's on a horse. So I was thinking if it's just the three kids and they're like getting a little fucked. And then Luke rides it on a fucking horse. <laughs> okay. Have a tasting. Yeah, they don't need to much. literally recreate the painting. No, no, no. no, I, no I want them a... to have a seven headed dragon. We're going to have a seven headed <laughs> dragon in this thing. Was, was that the Tesla Hydra? Was there seven heads on it? No. Well, there was three heads on that dragon. I'm assuming that was the Tesla Hydra. But I was thinking of Tiamat, which yeah. is like the god of the, the goddess of destruction, which is a seven headed dragon in D&D. So bring that into it <laughs> wow uh, wow wow <laughs> you know yeah it could be it could be. To it could be the giant monster, monster with the gaping, with the gaping, mouth. gaping yeah. mouth yeah whatever the monster with the gaping mouth will be is obviously they're going to name it something else from D, just for a yeah. final big D monster in in stranger things because like, yeah, they've been doing it's it going to be the fucking what do you call it um what's the thing with the, the big eyeball the beholder, the beholder. Man's got those eyeballs yeah 
what Vecna has become. Well, it's just that it has a really large gaping mouth, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a pretty big gaping yeah. mouth. It's kind of just a mouth. But I then, to be, honest, to be honest, though, they name the monsters based on their abilities, not on how they look. You know what I mean? So it's not necess- they're not necessarily going to go, that was a big mouth. What do we know as a big mouth? <laughs> It'll be more like what it does or what we'll it represents. Dustin. And then this. Dustin, come on. Give us something. <laughs> give us something here. Um, do we think we're going to get a bigger body count in the last season then? Now that they don't have to uh, hold back on be, anyone? Like, they've got so many characters now. Hmm. They have to, right? They have to kill off everyone. I was expecting more people to die in season four, to be honest. I was expecting a bit of a Thanos Infinity War situation. Mm, that would be nice. Well, I'm hoping we do see uh, Yuri and Dimitri come in with, like, you know, their support. And, uh, okay, so there's two. Uh... <laughs> There's two to die, like two to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Argyle, I don't know if he'll die, but well, Argyle be, is there. I think it'll be fun to see them coming in because obviously they've have a, a a good status and they probably um have the support of of military back home now since what they've done. Maybe I don't mm. know, but it'll be fun to see them come in to offer their support. But then you have the U.S. military guys really not wanting to play ball like at all. Sort of be like that kind of like. Conflict. Political conflict there, as well as mm. like the physical conflict against whatever enemies yeah. are there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. That'd be fun. And then they might even have their own secret agendas. It's like, okay, yeah, we'll go in, but it's like that the the Soviets are actually wanting to try and condition, try and uh, capture it again. So it's it'll be the Wayland Utani group coming in mm. essentially to try yeah, and. Yeah. So this will be the aliens of the series. I I think uh, I think Joyce will die. Yeah, probably. Can because be well, it's just that uh, in my mind, right? There's two endings to Hopper's story as a character. If you think about the way he's written and just the kind of tragic character he is, yeah. There's two endings to his story. One, he dies. Two, he does not find happiness. That is the end. Those are the two endings nah, for nah, a character nah, like that, right? You gotta give him his happiness. And they already did the killing him. I said they probably so they would can't again, do though. that again. Really, I don't they know. Just I, did with Max. I suppose. Technically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I know. they probably will. <laughs> probably will kill Hopper yeah. in a heroic death instead of killing Joyce. But if they're not, one of them will die. They'll kill Joyce. Would be more surprising, alone. I think. Do you think they'll get their... No, I don't think Eleven will die. Do you think there'll be like a scene where like they're in the kind of real post-apocalyptic uh, Hawkins and they're... Man, I can't wait. They're, they're like, <laughs> they're holding the fort essentially. And it's in um, Enzo's, is that what's called? Enzo's Diner, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, that would and be then, And then they great. have that realization that they're this here. This is where they are. And yeah. They're, they have that. Man, that would be great. Yeah. Because they're definitely not getting a date there. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be beautiful, actually. That would be a wonderful uh, kind of payoff yeah. if they end up in Enzo's. That would be great. Mm. I'd imagine, I think they might just stumble upon there, more so than holding down a fort. Kind of like like a final hurrah before the before the final fight. Let's go in here and have a, a drink. Let's go in here and have a, have a bottle of Chianti and Oh, like find one back in the storage or something. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, I'd imagine I'm I I kind of would hope for this to be a little bit like Doom. <laughs> Just like I don't know, dust or something becomes like the Doom Slayer to start fucking hacking shit up with an axe. That's definitely not gonna not happen. gonna happen. <laughs> but, well, more Steve, Steve or Nancy, Steve and Nancy and them. Man, how cool were their outfits actually in the finale, Steve? Oh, uh, that Nancy was definitely Robin. Like... They look so cool. Aliens though. Very much oh, so, hundred yeah. yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did like their plan and the way they had it in phases. It was well thought out. I liked it. Yes, although it I cool. did, I did think about it though because I started to watch episode eight again before we went on to this. Oh yeah, and do you think that was all actually Vecna's plan? Well, he did say something along the lines of, "Do you, do you not think I? Did you think I didn't know what you were doing or something like that?" So yeah, uh, and I'm not sure I... it was his plan because I don't know why it would be. But he was definitely aware 
Yeah, I think. Well, he, yeah, I'd, say, I'd say he came became aware as they were as they were like, as as it was happening. Like yeah. as Max said, "Take me on." I think he was like, "Okay, it's a trap, but I'm interested. I'll no, take the but bait." The fact that he can <laughs> like he can read people's minds, right? Sure. Which means he can just read Max's mind to go, "Oh, I I can see your plan," because he can just read it. Yeah, yeah. Which is then why he opened up to then take her on. But a part of me is like because he's still connected to him and because he's the master of puppets. Do you think he slightly puppeteered Max and Nancy to lead everyone into that situation so that he can get I, at them? I, I wouldn't say wasn't so. expecting an 11. I don't think so. Only because, um, like, it didn't matter. Like, it didn't have to be Max. As long as he killed a fourth person. It's just, I think he just, his interest was piqued. I think he was just like, okay, I'll bite. Mm-hmm. Like, you're you're challenging me? Of mm-hmm. you're, you're challenging me? <laughs> Come on. So I think it was just he was interested in the challenge of, oh, you are going to try kill me, like, mm, okay. um, because of how inferior he sees humans and how superior he sees himself. Mm. Um, how do you think ultimately they're going to kill Vecna? I don't know, because I... It seems I, I physically thought, very hard to kill. I thought that was a bit ridiculous that he managed to survive two mods of cocktails and, what, three or four shots with a shotgun? It's like and a fall off the uh, third story like, building. F- <laughs> yeah, but they should have went for the head. That yeah. was a Thanos clicking the fingers moment. To be honest, like they should have yeah, went yeah. for the head. Maybe but it's just, it's yeah, it's just it, that that was strange because I don't see as far as I can tell he's still human, only kind of scarred and deformed from being in here. I I don't see how he has. Is he? Does he have the abilities of the Demogorgons? But if that's the case, then Fire should kill him. Like, I, I that that to me was a bit strange that he might survive that. I wonder if like over strange time thing, was it? It was that was that was that was, was, strange, that was one of the stranger the thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if over time he has become pretty like I like I I don't know like maybe because of the amount of things he has spread himself into, he has or actually. Dr. Brenner says something along the lines of like every time he kills a victim, he consumes them and he consumes their power, their strength, everything that they are, everything that will be. So I wonder if the, with not, every, not only every time he's killed someone, but with the amount of stuff he has taken over mm. that he has actually become physically godlike, like he is physically very hard to kill, in which case I wonder if the ultimately the ending is going to be that they have to try invade his mind and kill him from the inside out which is why maybe in season five we'll have a finale they where 11 is facing down to get into the inside out <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then back to the right side up yes because I, I i imagine that there will be a scene where jamie campbell bauer is playing himself again hmm. but it won't be uh you can't reverse what vecna looks like so it'll be when she invades his mind, because that's how he looks. What does he inside? Eat? I have a clue, because that planet looks very barren. Isn't I actually that, don't even know what the demogorgon consumes. Demogorgons. Hmm. hmm. You are what you eat, you know. Yeah. Well, he looks like a corpse. So. Good question, Adam. Hmm. That's well, what like, we what, really want to know. How that's do you the, sustain yourself? Where are they going to answer long? that? Yeah. Well, I could explain. Well, is, uh, is how did Will? How did Will do it? How, yeah, how did Will survive for so long? How did you there? do it, Will? Will, what do you know, man? What do the Demogorgons eat? Because they, you know, they eat meat like. But there's Why like did Vecna there. have a tentacle put in Will's mouth? Was that, was that, what was that actually about? <laughs> He's got some creepy fetishes, all right? He's been on a planet with nothing. Two I... sons and no women. What else yeah, is he yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to do? <laughs> I... I... <laughs> I have confusion about um, the life cycle as well of the Demogorgons now. So I'm like, do they cycle this way now because Vecna has like taken over them and twisted them into kind of a new creation? Or did they always like go through a cycle of being a polywog and then a demo dog and then a, you know what I mean? Is that actually the cycle though? Uh, it seems to be. I thought they were like, I thought a demo dog was. Just a, a totally different, different creature. Different creature, just because it has a tail and the demogorgon doesn't. But does that not just go away over time in the same way as like we once had tails? Yeah, because it is was not mm-hmm. sort of answering that in at the end of season three when the demodog walks out and but then stands up. I'm supposed to tell you, 
that well, is I just what thought that was a crawling people. demogorgon. Yeah, I thought that too, but I also to was wondering in the Russian prison in the finale, I thought it was that they started off with dogs. Like whatever way that like so they have the particle things mm-hmm. which maybe infected someone which spat out a polywog or the slug thing that turns into a polywog that grows into a demi dog that eventually one of them grew into the demogorgon that they have mm-hmm. I, I don't know I, but then in that case where does the demo bats come into it? like where do they come from yeah yeah and are they creations of vecnas or are they just things that live there we have questions. Questions that need answering. We have, we do, we do. Like, and the tentacles, where are the vines? Where did they come from? Because they weren't in the big. But then again, then again, entered. we are, we are talking like we don't know how big this world is, right? You're right. So it'd be the That's equivalent true. of like, I don't know. You have, you have an alien coming down to Earth, let's say, and lands in the Sahara Desert, and I look around, and go, well, what does anyone eat here? I mean. What the hell? Like, how are they breeding oxygen? I'm not sure. Like, maybe, plants. yeah, maybe like he walked further. There was a forest. There was fruit. Yet, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. A maybe a forbidden forest. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine they're aware of like because they they purposely change the color tone of the upside down to like a sort of greeny sort of color. Well, it's it's amber, isn't it? When he's walking around exploring, and now all of a sudden it's this reddish color, red and blue. But it was mm. totally amber and brown when he was walking around in it. Um, that's a choice, obviously. So they must know mm-hmm. they're raising questions. And oh yeah. So for season five, I'm sure we'll get answers. How many stuff. answers do we want to get? Though? All, of know, all of them. I love. Like, I love do you think though there's some stuff we shouldn't know? Where it's like that's just always like for example. I don't think we'll ever know why Henry has powers. I think that's just he was just born that way. I imagine so. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think there's going to be a... And the reason Henry has powers is because... Like, I think that'll just be one of those things that that he just has powers. And then... But did they clone him? Yeah, I think so. I think they used his DNA... um, I think they did as well, yeah. ...children. Um, So is he technically the father of all the children? Technically. So they might get an explanation as to why this one kid has abilities... I mean, why not? That would explain everything uh, to do with the psychic children. But it's the upside down I'd like more information on. And it doesn't even have to be in the season. It could I get be, you. It could but be like, supplementary material if they wanted to. Yeah, but, but like, would they would they explain, you know, the shadow thing? Mm-hmm. And he shapes it into the mind flare. And we now understand why he shaped it that way. And mm-hmm. why he ultimately used it to do everything that it's doing. Because he just wants to kill everything. But... Will we ever understand what that was originally, or will that just be a mystery thing that's like, oh well, we'll never understand that because it lived in another dimension? And- no, I don't think so. You probably wouldn't even get like, like what's that, or what's the demogorgons, or whatever. But there, we might just get an explanation as to what the realm actually is. Like, is it another dimension? Is it another planet? Is it this- right? Hell? We might get is that. This- yeah, like that will be, and that's enough to explain the ecology well that's enough to as well let your imagination start filling in blanks and doing the rest mm-hmm. isn't it yeah. it's like yeah yeah i agree Kula bula. um is there anything else anyone wanted to uh bring up um or is there anything that we feel like we missed from the finale or any other theories or speculations anyone wants to bring up before we bring the discussion to an end it was fucking awesome fucking bring it on fucking <laughs> <laughs> i just hope us- it doesn't take this long to get the next one it won't. They won't take that long because they won't have COVID yeah. holding them back. So yeah. like two two years at the most, I'd say. No, I want yeah, it like probably. now. I yeah, but you do have now. to allow time to actually film it and make. And I mean, they're definitely going to make more long so episodes. What's this? this is um. <laughs> when when is this season based? Eighty four. This was eighty six. Eighty six. Okay, so are we going into the nineties? That's what everyone was theorizing. But it's like there's no way they're gonna wait four years. No way, Vecna. I remind everyone else, but no way Vecna is like, here's my clouds, here's my lightning, here's my snow. But I'm gonna wait four years before I unleash anything. Yeah, no, you no, see, it could be just it's all unleashed. Yeah, it's just... yeah like they, they could be genuinely dealing with it. I, I I feel like they can't jump that far, but when they initially like before we saw the finale and we had no idea how this was gonna end, because I actually did think originally they were gonna kill Vecna. Uh, happy ending 
but that season five, then the mind flare would come back. I still thought that was the kind of overarching villain. Mm. Um, and I did think that they were going to jump to the nineties then, like as in 1990, they were out of the eighties now. Mm. But now I feel like that's too far to jump. No, it's too, yeah, it is given, far, yeah. given the in- instant danger that they're in, like they can jump a year at most. Yeah. And have that. They've been holding this thing back for a year, but I mean, come on. Yeah. The, well, they could barely hold it back for a couple of like, well, yeah, it took them they almost... did hold it back for a whole year the first time with the gate. Yeah, that's true. But then that was but this is fucking huge. Yeah, this that was a slightly smaller gate, and sure, that was just tunneling down. They're gonna have to do like a quarantine story, and also actually, Doctor Owens might have like, okay, we need precautions in place because if we're burning this, it's gonna go underneath the wall. So we need like, like maybe they have like, okay, we know how we've how we didn't deal with this before. We need other ways of dealing with it. Okay. Uh, but I don't know. I don't build a fucking... giant wall, but then build like trenches. Just like turn the Hawkins into almost just this island cut off from everything else. Yeah, actually. And that might be the best way of, of, of dealing with it. But uh, I'm so interested to see what, what's going to happen next. Well, the I'm, Russian like, I mean... involvement is actually that they don't. I, I, instead of sending troops to Hawkins to help out but what if they're actually going to reopen the gate on their end and attack from their side so that you have them attacking from two fronts yeah shit man she... I, yeah the fact as well that they've pretty much said they have it all mapped out and figured out Um, it's just exciting yeah, yeah like, it's great where, where are they going with this uh, how have they set it all up and ultimately how is this whole thing going to end it's going to be so sad when it's over but I also like that there is an end in sight that they have built up to because like all of the best stories are the ones that you you revisit because you want them back. You mm. know what I mean? They don't just fizzle out. It's mad um, that this is like they have endings. Like a turned up to eleven. Hey. 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 Um, <laughs> you know, like season two is an obvious progression from season one. Right, and so yeah, season very three much so. is an obvious progression from season two, really, with the the threat and stuff like that. It's still, it's always like a, a singular threat, but yep. this is fucking like what? This is a worldwide <laughs> fucking. It's it's yep. gone way off. <laughs> it's but amazing. I also feel like it was always it always had to go that way, where it's like the end game would ultimately have to be the upside down coming into Hawkins. Yeah. Mm. Like it had to go that way eventually because that was just the impending threat of it was always trying to breach. And mm-hmm. it was always like only just a small gate and a kind of isolated incident that they, could, they were able to contain. And now there's no containing this. There's no covering this shit up. <laughs> you know? And now everyone in Hawkins will be affected. Like it's got to be really exciting as well to see some of the other characters like, like the Wheelers. Yeah. As a family. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, will Ted be like, nah, the government told us it was just an earthquake and, like, yeah. you know, the mother being like, are you fucking listening? <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, someone, she's got to lose her head with him eventually because that's just been, like, waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's funny. He's a funny guy. <laughs> and, like, will we see Dr. Clark back? Or Mr. Clark? Is Mr. Clark? Um, he wasn't in this season, but... Oh, yeah, yeah he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't in this season, but he might have It'd be really interesting to see him spend a bit of time with Erica because he's her teacher now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, anyway, anyway, this episode was not quite as long as our Volume One spoiler discussion, but only because Volume One was seven episodes. But we nearly got there <laughs> with the two episodes. Let us know, you guys, what you all thought of the finale of Stranger Things Season 4, but also your theories and your speculations for Season 5 in terms of what will happen, how long will the time jump be, and how ultimately will they resolve the story? Who will die? Let us know. If you're watching this on YouTube, jump down in the comments, share your thoughts, and if you enjoyed this discussion, why not give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click that notification bell for all of our future conversations around Stranger Things and everything else we like to talk about. If you guys listen to us on audio platforms, you can also touch base on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take, again, to give your take on Stranger Things Season 4. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. We'll be back to talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.